The snowpack that melts from the high elevations creates these beautiful oxygen-rich streams that flow throughout the park and support a variety of trout. But there is one trout that's significant to this park, known as the Bonneville cutthroat trout. In order to catch this fish, I brought along a few basic items, a lightweight fly rod, a very good pair of polarized sunglasses to see into this crystal clear water, and one barbless hook fly for a quick catch and release, which is what I prefer to do with these fish. The fly that I'm going to be using today is called a freshwater scud. And this is an orange color, about a size 20. And it represents a number of different uh, aquatic insects and freshwater shrimp that you can find easily in the stream. And that's it. So let's go fishing. Another thing to keep in mind is a dark colored shirt so that you don't stand out against the background because they can see you as much as you can see them. A low approach, and then just let your fly drop into the water and go right with the flow of the stream. Lake Bonneville was a prehistoric lake whose waters used to lap at the base of Great Basin National Park. With the end of the ice ages, Lake Bonneville receded into what is now known as the Great Salt Lake in Utah. Bonneville cutthroat trout, which had once thrived in Lake Bonneville, were trapped in high mountain streams as remnants of this ancient lake. Oh, there's one. Oh, he's caught up in the snags. Oh, yeah. Nice fish. Oh, let's take a look at this. And here you have it. This is just like a living dinosaur, a remnant from Bonneville Lake from thousands of years ago. This is a Bonneville cutthroat trout. And the way you can identify the Bonneville cutthroat trout is by the spots, the, the larger spots here towards the back. And of course, the telltale sign right here is the orange slash mark underneath the cut of the jaw. And with that said, let's get him released back to his native waters. That was fun.